So I recently was at a uh, large trade show, the Global Pet Expo, and I was speaking with a couple guys that are on the front end of ball python breeding. And uh, they had informed me that the ball python breeders at the top were collectively not going to release any normal ball pythons into the pet trade this year. And uh, we've seen the, uh, the result of that. Prices on ball pythons have skyrocketed and literally gone through the roof. Supply and demand has truly taken place. Now let's replace ball pythons with oil and the stock market. Pretty interesting, right? I want to welcome you to TDI Live Episode 7. Today we'll be covering what's new in the world of TDI, a little bit of industry news regarding a large boa, a pretty cool reptile myth about biting, and of course we have a conspiracy regarding the attack on the Saudi oil fields. Today is Wednesday, September the 18th. I'm Matt. And I'm Bill. And I'm Heather. And you are listening to TDI Live. So what's new in the world of tie-dyed iguana? Uh, yesterday, uh, myself and Debbie headed down to um, a buying show in Nashville, Tennessee. It was uh, lackluster <laughs> at best, but it was still cool. We drove, uh, I think, a total of nine hours and spent two hours at this particular show. Um, nothing real new coming in. We have a couple new Seachem products coming in. Uh, the big thing, though, is we finally built the tortoise pen. So there is a YouTube video out right now, part one. When does part two come out, Heather? It comes out later today, so by, by the time this uh, podcast is posted, it'll be up. Cool. So um, the tortoise pen is nearly complete. There's a couple little minor details. Uh, running electric, uh, we have to have a motion sensor move before we put the tortoise in. But uh, within the next week, you will see the tortoise pen up and going. And then this weekend, myself and Eric will be in Springfield, Missouri for the Show Me Snakes Springfield show. So, reptile industry news. What is going on? I hear there's a... A large boa that was found. What can you tell us about this? Yeah, so in Ohio, this lady, uh, she actually found a seven-foot uh, boa constrictor in her uh, back, in, out in her, I, feel, I don't know if it was her backyard or front lawn, but it was definitely where it should not have been. So it was probably dumped, and that's a big problem. In where was this exactly? This was in, uh, the city was called South U- Uslid, Ohio. Euclid? Euclid. I guess that's Euclid. how you say it. I like Euclid. <laughs> yeah. Let's stick with it. No, so, that seems to happen a lot, though. Yeah, this is a pretty common problem. I mean, they're seeing it in Florida. You know, the, the Burmese pythons are now... Established. Yeah, I was going to say they're more or less a native species, but that's obviously the wrong word, established. Yeah. Um, we've had customers before bring in, like, chameleons that they found outside. Like, chameleons from Yemen, you know? Yeah. Uh, what's one of the weirdest ones we've ever had brought in? I remember a veiled chameleon. I think, I I'm think like that was days. one of the weirdest I ones. I think that was one of the weirdest ones because, like, a veiled chameleon, this isn't, I don't think it, Illinois has the right weather for one, really. No. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't have survived very long. No. I know we've had bearded dragons brought in that people have found. I know we've had snakes brought in. We've never had a boa constrictor brought in that somebody found. Yeah. So, yeah, this is just a classic example where someone doesn't want a pet. They dump it, um, thinking everything will be okay, and then this happens. Now, in reality, this boa constrictor would have never survived a Ohio winter. I mean, it would no. have died. Yes. So, it's not like the Florida issue where it's going to become established. You've got Burmese pythons and gators. Had this been released in Florida, it probably would have survived. And yes, they probably I imagine. A... I imagine there's wild boas. Yeah, in that's what I was thinking. They probably have a boa. They probably have a problem with nearly anything that's released down there. Yeah, and I've heard veiled chameleons are a problem in Florida. They, yeah, they established. <laughs> they're, the they're a problem. Can you imagine? Oh no, my God, well, all I mean, these veiled chameleons. Think... They're destroying our crops. No, now. I don't think they cause much of an issue. It's I know what just... you mean. I'm just teasing. I'm just thinking about like a killer veiled chameleon. Well, I heard tegus <laughs> are getting established down there as well as water monitors. Yeah. Unfortunately, some of the folks in our industry just aren't the brightest crayons in the box. Well, and there's a lot of exotic fish that are in the Florida waterways. And, and this, I think they tie a lot of this back to one of the hurricanes that happened like 20 or 25 years ago and a lot of the tropical fish importers and reptile importers their places got destroyed and you know 
I remember hearing they that. probably escaped then, but there are people that, you know, they get something when it's small, and then they're, you know, once it starts getting big, then they're afraid of it, and then they just take it, and they just dump it. So, I mean... Luckily, a, rest, a reptile rescue place uh, was able to take in this seven-foot boa that the lady found, so they're going to find it a new home. There's a video out there of this, isn't there? Didn't it make the news or something? I think it made the local news. Local news? Yeah. Hmm. All right, so um, let's talk about reptile myths. We've got a, a good myth today to debunk. All reptiles will bite. Um, I think that might be almost more of a myth about snakes more so than anything. But uh, It can go for lizards, too. Yeah, there's. I know I've seen a lot of people over the years that come in here, and uh, you know they're just totally freaked out, I think, because it's something out of the norm for them. I remember selling a uh, corn snake in particular and putting it into a gentleman's hand, and he threw it. It's like totally freaked out. And uh, didn't bite them. No. But, uh, I mean, the, what from your experience, Bill, what causes a reptile to bite? Uh, either aggression or feed feeding response. Usually if you get bit and it hangs on, that's a feeding response. Usually a you know, defensive bite is bite and let go. I, I mean, I normally just tell people what if they say, does it bite? And I'm like, anything with a mouth can bite. So, I mean, there's always child. that chance but i mean there's some species that i mean it's almost very very rarely heard of do you know what i'm thinking of right now (laughs) do you remember early on (laughs) when we were feeding that berm for that kid oh yeah uh, and he stuck his hand stuck his hand in the feed bin yeah and it latched and he screamed like a little girl yeah and you you was on the other side of the store and you heard him you come running and it, it was wrapped around his hand yeah and it was probably about a three foot it was albino Burmese. for a child for a kid that size. Oh yeah, I mean it was. Uh, I guess he was like eight years old. Because they they had it, I guess they fed it in like a cardboard box. So they threw the rat in there, and I guess the rat had jumped up on the lid because they didn't have the lid completely shut, and the kid was gonna poke the rat back in the box. And about the time I said I wouldn't do do that, <laughs> he got tagged and the snake. <laughs> I think it's funny. I'm sorry, <laughs> but it's. I I can imagine it being very traumatic to a little kid. One of my buddy's daughters, when she was real little, they he had caught a box turtle, and I guess she was holding the box turtle up towards her face, and she was sticking her tongue out at it. It latched onto her tongue. Yeah. And she come running in, and you know, got this box turtle. And my buddy said he just grabbed it and yanked it off. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple things I wouldn't want to be bit by, and uh, a tortoise would actually be one of them. Oh, yeah. I got bite. some pretty that wicked. That would really pinch, and that would really hurt. Yeah. The, uh, so, yeah, generally when you find a reptile biting, it's typically an instinctive response. I mean, they're not going to bite just to bite. I mean, they don't really, like... <sighs> they won't They won't chase after you to bite yeah, you. No. <laughs> exactly. Snakes and lizards don't... I mean, they're not, like what you doing willis and you know they chase after you they're like yeah you know they're scared they're defending themselves or they're hungry and uh like a snake can't really differentiate it sees heat in motion and it's small enough to put in its mouth and yep next thing you know it latches onto you and then you've got that panic and especially if the snake is you know underfed like we get some rescues in and they're just i mean it takes them a couple months before they get um to where they just don't bite anything that comes into the cage so the we might as well bring this up then for those of you that are listening. Um, what do you do if a snake latches onto you? Um, what always worked best for me was putting some sort of alcohol on their nose. It could be hand sanitizer, rubbing alcohol, vodka, but some sort of alcohol like on their nose so that when they inhale, they inhale all that in. And I've never had that not work. Yeah, to get something I to go. had it not work one time. Yeah, yeah. We had it work, not work one time, and we had the uh, I think it was a Mexican black king snake had bit one of the workers. That's just because that king snake was a drinker. Yeah. You couldn't give it enough alcohol. Yeah. He was seasoned. Well, I got bit by a pretty decent sized Maclots python, and I was dumping hand sanitizer down its throat. Oh, I it, remember that. That was it, here, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. And I mean, there was blood everywhere because it grabbed my hand and it constricted it. So, and then as it was biting, it was like twisting. So it was like taking a razor blade and just slicing my finger open. That dude wasn't, he was hungry, man. He was yeah. Like, Screw you. But yeah, if uh, if the alcohol doesn't work, um, pry it off. I mean, I always like to kind of hold the head in place so it doesn't sink in necessarily. But remember, yeah. their teeth are recurved, so they, they hook backwards. So uh, don't yank. 
that's going to make it a little bit worse. I've heard it r putting them under running water too sometimes works. Yeah, the, I mean, I guess the biggest problem with the alcohol in the water even is a snake can hold its breath for up to 30 minutes. Yeah. So, I mean, if that dude's like hell bent on doing his thing. Yeah. Yeah. Then there's that. So let's talk about the, the Saudi oil field. And uh, it's funny because this is usually Bill's conspiracy, but I told Heather, I was like, ooh, I got one on this. But I don't know if, do you have, do you have a thought on the Saudi oil field bombing? Um, I certainly do. From the chatter that I've heard, I mean, you can go ahead and tell your part and I'll just. So, yeah, this is conspiracy only, obviously. There's no fact to back this up. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm looking at kind of what's going on in the country right now, you know, under our current administration. And, um. You know, there's chatter of the economy crashing, and some parts of the administration say the economy's strong, but then there's chatter about it weakening. We're seeing rates get cut, and there's been uh, news about the Trump administration pushing for negative interest rates. So most people are freaking out about that. They say, hey, rate cuts, negative interest rates, the economy must be tanking. Personally, I don't think that's the case. I think Trump is a business. I know Trump is a businessman, and he's pushing for lower rates because that directly benefits him, you know, as an investor. A negative interest rate would benefit him even more. Uh, basically, negative interest rates are where um, you know the bank is forced to lend out money. So if I have a loan and the payment on it is $1,000 and I make my $1,000 payment, um, the payment in reality might be $1,100. So you get a free $100 knocked off your loan. That's how the negative interest rate works. So for our president, um, multi-billionaire, entrepreneur, business owner, investor to push for negative interest rates... Come on, guys, that's not a sign of a weak economy. That's a sign of a businessman, you know, really fortifying his position. Now, let's look at this attack on the on the Saudi oil fields. Um, I obviously know nothing about what our president is invested in, but I would be shocked if he weren't invested in oil to some degree. So the Saudi oil field gets taken out. Immediately, um, the price of oil skyrockets, and then the stock market declines. Sounds pretty beneficial to me if you're a multi-billion dollar investor. Your oil stocks go up, everything else declines. You plow more money into the declined stocks, which are now pretty much bounced back up, and you've got an instant profit overnight. So I'm not going to name names, but yeah, I don't <laughs> think this was uh, I don't think this was ironic. Uh, what are your thoughts, Bill? Okay, from the chatter that I heard, <laughs> the and chatter. yes, the chatter. Bill's chatter. And it comes from military intelligence and then other people that, you know, different YouTube channels that I watch that have, you know, information and, and sources that, you know, pretty much the same. A lot of it's military intelligence. But um, basically a couple drones and I guess a couple cruise missiles went in and took out part of it, I guess a significant part, but I heard that they've pretty much got it all up and going. They said they'll be at full production by the end of the month, which is only a couple weeks. Um, they originally said that production was going to be cut by half for the long term, didn't they? They did originally. And see, it's interesting because you say something like that on the global market and what happens, Oh yeah, the investors react. Yeah. See? That's what I'm saying, man. Like, All they have to do is just say... That's it. That oil, yeah. yeah. So who do you think is responsible for it? I heard that it was basically, and and these people have several different names. Some people call them the deep state, uh, black ops, uh, rogue CIA agents, um, paid mercenaries, just whatever. Just the bad guys that are trying to, uh, they're basically trying to get us to go to war with another nation, which... Iran's not going to start a war with us. They haven't started a war in over 200 years. And Trump is not a neocon. He's not into, you know, the whole war thing. He's trying to pull all the, you know, troops out of all the other countries that are kind of in conflict and bring them home. But I heard it was basically, you know, the deep state set these off because they have assets and everything it's basically like a government within a government, and they basically hold the, say, puppet government that is, you know, focused on, they basically hold them hostage and, and everything like this. And, and these, like North Korea had it, and those were eliminated. That's why we're having peace talks with North Korea, and the leader is able to leave his country for the first time ever, and because uh, he don't have that control over him, and... Syria is pretty much done, 
and we're working on Afghanistan. And then I haven't really heard very much about Venezuela in a while, so I'm not really sure about that. But uh, but apparently, like the Saudi oil fields, they're fortified to be defend, you know, be protected against things like this. And I know when this happened, uh, the president he upped our, I guess he released our oil reserves or whatever. But apparently. We're almost number one or are number one in oil production since, you know, they started all this fracking and stuff in which I'm not a huge fan of that, but, you know, but, uh, and we're down the it's good. Hole. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's good for, down the officially. yeah, they just, <laughs> fracking is basically they drill in <laughs> Oh, here we go. and they put what the water, you know? that water that has chemicals in it, it dissolves the shale and it's easier and it's easier to pump the oil out. So, the attack on the oil fields, I, I think we both agree that it was motivated by something other than terrorism. Um, yeah, it was, to, I think it was either to get us to push, uh... Hey, guess what? That's Bill's phone. That's okay. That's okay, Bill. Well, I put it on <laughs> silent. I can, I can tell. <laughs> yeah, it sounded real silent, didn't it? Yeah. But, uh, so what do you think it's motivated by? I think that these deep state factor factors or whatever i think they're wanting us to go to war because war is very profitable and uh, they don't they don't care about lives you know because i can name several wars or conflicts that we've been in in that never should have happened that you know a lot of american servicemen lost their lives over people's greed all right well yeah, oil. All right, let's move on. Heather, you got something for us. Okay, so we're going to play the game again. Never have I ever, but this time it's not going to have anything dirty or anything bad in it. <laughs> that was on our first episode, wasn't it? <laughs> um, or no, that was the... Oh, uh, it doesn't matter. First or second. Yeah. Okay. The first one is, never have I ever been chased by a dog. I was chased by a dog when I was yeah. a kid. On base, I remember that. I got was... chased and bit. See, I didn't get bit because I was, was teasing it. There was this little fiery dog next door to us. I think its name was Sheba or Sheila or something like that. Whew. Man, that was the scary. I remember. Oh, it was so scary. It's like a little gremlin. Yeah. I remember it chasing me. Well, I got. Well, when I when I grew up in East St. Louis and we called bigger dogs, we call them police dogs. <laughs> and the neighbor had one. It was in its yard. And me and a buddy of mine were teasing the dog. And the dog was going nuts, and then the dog kind of like went back, and he turned around, he jumped over the fence, and we took off. My buddy, he he was gone, and I had, I don't know if you remember those like red rubber boots that you have with, you know, you're a kid to walk in the rain. So I couldn't really run, and he tackled me, he bit me right in the side. That's what you got. And that's what my dad said. He goes, you were out there teasing it, you got what, you know, the dog had all its shots and everything, and, uh. My dad's like, you know, you got what you deserved, and I never teased that dog again. <laughs> oh, man. All right, the next one is, never have I ever gotten a tattoo that I later regretted. Oh, man, I got one of those. I'm not talking about it, though. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I have any that I regret. I definitely have one that I regret. I regret. Those of you that are close to me know exactly what it is. If I you're know. Not close, yeah, <laughs> if you're not close to me, well, you may never know, but I'm not giving any more specifics that, on that. That's okay. It can be a yes or no question. Okay, so the next one is, never have I ever lied to get out of going to work. I've done that. I probably have. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know I have. I remember... At the uh, factory. Mine would have been uh, when I worked at Office Max in, uh, I think I was in college or high school, and it snowed like two inches, and I pulled that line of shit that everybody around here does. Oh, my car's stuck. Uh, you know, yeah. it's not stuck. You guys are just being lazy. And, uh... Yeah, then my boss offered to come pick me up, and <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I got done that. I got caught one time, and and uh, it was Fourth of July, and I called in, you know, called in sick, and then me and this is when I was still married to my second wife and her kids and stuff, my stepkids. We went downtown for the the Fourth of July parade. Well. We were right there, and 
There was a news team, and my boss seen me on the news because I heard about it the next day. He goes, oh, you were sick? I said, yeah. He goes, well, how come I seen you? Um, down at the off. yeah, the how come I seen you on the news down at the the fair in St. <laughs> Louis? I was like, I was like, oh. I was like, well, busted, and he just laughed, and that was it. It's pretty funny. Okay, the last one is never have I ever broken something at a friend's house and then not told them. I never did that. No, I never done that. Oh, I thought maybe you guys would have a good story. No, um, <laughs> I've broken stuff, but I got. Has that ever yeah. happened at your house? Something. <laughs> and not told me um that has happened once but the reason the individual didn't tell me is because uh, he had a little too much to drink and i don't think he remembered it but uh i found it the uh <laughs> he might be listening to this but uh i won't name names the toilet was broken off of the floor and there was a hole in my wall wow <laughs> that's a pretty major break yeah stella comes out and she's like dad the bathroom's broken i'm like oh whatever it'll be fine and i go in there and i'm like oh shit <laughs> literally Cool. All right. Well, uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. I want to thank you all for tuning in. I have in. a public service announcement. Oh, yeah. PSA. Let's hear it. <laughs> okay. I, I seen this the other day. He's seen it. And, uh, well, I read it. He's seen it. And so, apparently this guy in Florida was fishing, and I guess he caught a shark. So, alcohol's involved. So, he apparently dumped alcohol down the shark's throat, and then... Uh, I'll just read it. It said, a Florida man who dragged a shark to its death from a high-speed boat has been jailed for 10 days. Robert Benak, B-E-N-A-C, <laughs> the <laughs> third, will pay a $2,500 fine, perform 250 hours of service at an animal shelter, and lose his fishing license for three years after pleading guilty to misdemeanor of animal cruelty. Robert, you're a shithead. <laughs> no, I'm really? on that, man. Yeah. 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 So he caught a shark, got scared, put alcohol down its yeah. throat, and drug it. What an asshole. And I hope the 250 hours of uh, service at an animal shelter, I hope he passed to pick up elephant poop with his bare hands <laughs> for 250 hours. Hashtag Bill's PSA. <laughs> yep. Thank All right. you. Well, we're going to wrap up episode seven. Remember, you can find us on iTunes. We are on Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, and Podbean. Did I forget one? YouTube. No. And see, I do it every time. And I know. YouTube. Yeah, and this posts automatically to YouTube. Um, we also, you link it on our Facebook too, don't you? When a new yeah, episode comes out. Yeah, we make a post about it on yeah. Facebook. Yeah. So if you can't find it, then you're crazy. Uh, but the show is called TDI Live. We are here every week. Um, we publish on Thursdays, and we so far have been recording on Wednesdays. So yeah. Yeah. thank you all for tuning in. Once again, I am Matt. And I am Bill. And I'm Heather. And you're listening to TDI Live. Thank you for listening to Tide Eyed Iguana's podcast, TDI Live. And don't forget to visit us on the web at www.thetdi.com. You know I'm